Hey everyone, Luke here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you one of the best, simplest, and safest ways to ship a painting. I'm gonna go through a full material list of everything you're gonna need, as well as take you through a step-by-step -step process on how to do so. Now you're gonna to wanna to stay till the end of the video as I'm gonna give you five bonus tips to help you out with your shipping process, as well as save you some money. Let's start with all the materials and supplies you're going to need. I'll explain each product in more detail when they come up during the shipping process, and I'll make sure to leave links to all the products used down in the description. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right, let's get started with a full list of everything you're gonna need. You're gonna need some shrink wrap, some glassine paper, some bubble wrap, a tape gun, masking tape, a box cutter, a Sharpie. You're gonna need a box that's slightly bigger than your painting. You're gonna need another box that's slightly bigger than that last box. You're also gonna need some scrap cardboard and some packing paper. So let's quickly talk about glassine paper. It's a pH neutral acid free paper that is really only the safest material you would ever want to put on the face of a painting. It protects against accidental water and dust damage and is going to act as your first layer of protection when shipping your painting. And it's really cheap so there's really no reason not to use it. So this is the roll of glassine paper I'm going to be using. And I'm going to be cutting off a piece that's big enough to not only cover the face but also cover the sides of the painting as well. Now I like to use masking tape because it's strong enough to hold this glassine paper in place and it's also easy for the client to remove the masking tape and it doesn't leave any residue behind. So I'm just going to fold this up nice and neat like you would a present and then we're ready to move on to the next step. So next what we're going to do is take some scrap cardboard and cut a piece that is slightly bigger than the size of your painting and we're going to be placing that on top of the glassine paper. Now I like the cardboard to be slightly bigger so when I wrap this up nice and tight that cardboard will actually protect a little bit of the edges on the painting. Now there's two main reasons why we're going to be putting a spare piece of cardboard on the face of your painting. One is it's just another layer of protection. And number two, it's actually to protect against bubble wrap. So a lot of you may not know this, but bubble wrap has two different sides to it. It has a bumpy side and a flat side. If you were to accidentally wrap your painting in the bumpy side and something wasn't 100% completely cured, you could risk getting some of the damages shown here in this picture. Now there's nothing worse than your client sending you a message showing you pictures with these and you definitely want some peace of mind when you're shipping your painting. So we can avoid that problem altogether by simply putting a piece of scrap cardboard on the face of the painting as well as making sure when you are wrapping the painting with bubble wrap to make sure to put the flat surface on the face of the painting. So now I'm going to take some of the bubble wrap and I'm going to start to wrap the painting. Again making sure that I'm putting the flat side of the bubble wrap down. Now I have this bubble wrap that's serrated every 12 inches or so, which makes it really easy. I basically can just tear off as much as I need. I then put a couple of pieces of tape on there just to hold it in place a little bit. So then I can use the shrink wrap to wrap the whole painting up nice and tight. Now the shrink wrap's pretty self-explanatory, but for some people who don't know, the main reason why I'm getting this is to make sure everything's nice and tight. The last thing I want during shipping is for that piece of cardboard to start moving around or even the bubble wrap to move around. I just want to seal it up nice and tight to create a nice little package. Now the painting I'm going to be shipping is a 16 by 12 and so I have this 18 by 12 box that allows me to have a little bit of wiggle room in there. Now I picked up these boxes that have these pre-bends in them so essentially you can make the box as small as you want. Now you can do this with any regular box but you will have to make these bends yourself and with my experience it's quite a bit of a headache so either buy a box that already has a low profile or try and find a box like this that you can set the height however tall or short you desire. So you may be wondering why I asked you to get a box that was slightly bigger than the size of your painting and there's two main reasons for that. First is it's a lot easier for your client to unbox the painting when there's a little bit of room in there. Trust me, when the painting fits in there nice and snug, your clients are gonna reach for sharp objects to help them get it out, and that is just not a good idea. So make sure you leave a little bit of room to help your clients get the painting out. And number two is it's gonna add as a little bit of a buffer zone. So if this painting is to be mishandled by your courier, by your client, or even by you, what's gonna happen is the painting's not gonna take the brunt of the damage, and it will allow the box to have a little bit of give if the box is to be mishandled at all. So now we're gonna fill those voids with some of the packing paper to act as a little buffer. 
This packing paper is also going to make it so the painting's not shifting around in the box during travel. And then we simply finish off by taping the whole box shut. And there you have it. Your first box is complete. Now, this is good enough for some pieces. This is a completed box. But if you're shipping an original painting, a sentimental piece, or a high value item, we can do a lot better. And how I do that is with the double box method. All that means for you is we're gonna repeat the last three steps we just did and put it in another box. So we're gonna start by wrapping this up in some bubble wrap, then putting some shrink wrap on there. Now, if you remember, the first box we used was an 18 by 12, and this next box I'm going to be using is a 24 by 16. And so we're going to finish off just like we did the last box. We're going to put the painting in there and stuff all those four voids with some of the packing paper. And there you have it. Your painting is nice, safely packed and ready for shipping. But don't go anywhere. Like I promised, you stayed till the end of the video and here are your five bonus tips. First one is pretty simple, but can save you a massive headache. Make sure you write your address and your client's address on the box before you drop it off for shipping. Trust me when I say it is a massive headache when you forget to do this, you bring it to your courier service and you're scrambling to find a pen that works, you're rummaging through your phone to try and find your client's address and then trying to remember yours just avoid this problem altogether and make sure you get it done before you bring it to the courier service here in Canada you put your address in the top left and the client's address in the middle tip two is fragile stickers now simply by putting fragile stickers on your box is not instantly going to make the courier service handle it with extra care but they might and for how cheap it is it is totally worth it to put a couple of these stickers on your box just to give that friendly reminder for your courier service to handle this with a little bit of care i put one on the front here and one on the back Tip three is insurance. Now, I know what you're thinking. You just went and watched this whole video on one of the safest ways to ship a painting and now I'm telling you to get insurance, but hear me out. At the end of the day, how your courier service handles your package is completely out of your control. Everything we've done up to this point is to minimize any mishandling and it's a really effective way of doing it. But the reality is in some extreme cases, there may be damage and it may actually get lost. So spend a few extra bucks and add the appropriate insurance. Now, quick bonus tip about insurance. Some courier services already have a set amount. Canada Post, for example, gives you $100 of insurance on anything that you ship. And number two, some courier services will actually bump you up to expedited shipping when you add additional services. This is true for Canada Post. So make sure you do your research before selecting a courier service. Tip number four is register for a business. To offset your cost of insurance, register for a business. You can save a ton of money over the course of your career simply by registering for a small business with your courier service. Currently at the time of making this video, Canada Post small business members can save up to 34% shipping within Canada and up to 58% shipping internationally. So do your research, find a courier service that works best for you and find one that you can get some small business bonuses with. And last Lastly, number five, don't forget to get a tracking number. Make sure to ask whoever you're dealing with at the counter to give you a tracking number. There is nothing less professional than not having a tracking number. You may be shipping paintings worth hundreds or even thousands of dollars. Without a tracking number, you have no idea if they're lost, if they got held up at the border, or if they fell off a truck. You have literally no idea where this package so is. So do yourself and your client a favor and get a tracking number. And there you have it. I hope this video helped you out. And if it did, consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification to get notified when I drop new videos. I know when I was looking for a safe way to ship paintings, I could have used a video like this to really help me out. So let me know down in the comments if this helped you out. Or if you have any questions, feel free to ask down in the comment section. And as I mentioned, the full material list will be linked in the description. Thanks again for watching and take care.